Um, Recording in progress. That's good. May you experience some kind of impact from the Holy Spirit that lifts your spirits to equip and empower you. That's what today is all about, um, where we celebrate the gift of the Holy Spirit to the church. Um, so let's celebrate that. A lot of people talk about Pentecost being the birthday of the church. I've been thinking about that, and I think it's it's probably not the it's not when the church was born. That was born on Easter morning. That's when the church was born. That's the true birthday of the church, I think. But Pentecost is when we found out that we were the church. You know, the disciples had no idea what was going on until then. Once Pentecost came, they realised that they were the church and that uh, even though Jesus had said it before, that's when they realised it. So that, that's my only qualification there. Let's begin. In the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Let's sing our first song. Friends in Christ, let us draw near to God our Father with a true heart and confess our sins and ask him in the name of our Lord Jesus Christ to forgive us. Our help is in the name of the Lord. Amen. I said I will confess my sins to the Lord. Almighty God, merciful Father, I, a poor helpless sinner, confess to you all my sins and repent of all the evil I have done. I have deeply displeased you and deserve your punishment in time and in eternity. But I am sorry for my sins and I ask you for the sake of the holy, innocent sufferings and death of your dear Son, Jesus Christ, to be gracious and merciful to me. Amen. I ask each of you in the presence of God who searches the heart, do you confess that you have sinned and do repent of your sins? Do you believe that Jesus Christ has redeemed you from all your sins and do you desire forgiveness in his name? Do you intend with the help of the Holy Spirit to live in God's presence and to strive daily to lead a holy life, even as Christ has made you holy. Christ gave to his church 
the authority to forgive the sins of those who repent and to declare to those who do not repent that their sins are not forgiven. Therefore, upon your confession, I, as a called and ordained servant of the word, announce the grace of God to all of you. And on behalf of my Lord Jesus Christ, forgive you all your sins in the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit. Peace be with you. Amen. Beloved, let us love one another because love is from God. Everyone who loves is born of God and knows God. Have mercy. Christ, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. Glory to God in the highest. be with you. Let us pray. Lord God, you taught the hearts of your faithful people by sending them the light of your Holy Spirit. Fill us with the same Spirit so that we may love what is right and always rejoice in his comfort. We ask this through your Son, Jesus Christ, our Lord, who lives and reigns with you and the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. And we have the readings for today. Our first reading this morning, Pentecost, is from Ezekiel, chapter 37, A Valley of Dry Bones, beginning at the first verse. And this is a reading that you all know well. The Lord took hold of me, and I was carried away by the Spirit of the Lord to a valley filled with bones. He led me all around among the bones that covered the valley floor. They were scattered everywhere across the ground and were completely dried out. Then he asked me, son of man, can these bones become living people again? O oh, sovereign Lord, I replied, you alone know the answer to that. Then he said to me, speak a prophetic message to these bones and say, Dry bones, listen to the word of the Lord. 
This is what the Sovereign Lord says. Look, I am going to put breath into you and make you live again. I will put flesh and muscles on you and cover you with skin. I will put breath into you and you will come to life. Then you will know that I am the Lord. So I spoke this message just as he told me. Suddenly, as I spoke, there was a rattling noise all across the valley. The bones of each body came together, attached themselves as complete skeletons. Then as I watched, muscles and flesh formed over the bones. Then skin formed to cover their bodies, but they still had no breath in them. Then he said to me, speak a prophetic message to the wind, son of man. Speak a prophetic message and say, this is what the sovereign Lord says. Come, O breath, from the four winds. Breathe into these dead bodies that they may live again. So I spoke the message as he commanded me, and breath came into their bodies. They all came to life and stood up on their feet, a great army. Then he said to me, Son of man, these, these bones represent the people of Israel. They are saying, We have become old, dry bones. All hope is gone. Our nation is finished. Therefore, prophesy to them and say, This is what the, Lord's, the sovereign Lord says. O oh, my people, I will open your graves of exile and cause you to rise again. Then I'll bring you back to the land of Israel. When this happens, O oh, my people, you will know that I am the Lord. I will put my spirit in you and you will live again and return home to your own land. Then you will know that I, the Lord, have spoken and I have done what I said. Yes, the Lord has spoken. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Our second reading for today comes from Acts chapter 2 beginning at the first verse. The Holy Spirit comes. On the day of Pentecost, all the believers were meeting together in one place. Suddenly there was a sound from heaven like the roaring of a mighty windstorm and it filled the house where they were sitting. Then what looked like flames or tongues of fire appeared and settled on each of them. And everyone present was filled with the Holy Spirit and began speaking in other languages as the Holy Spirit gave them this ability. At that time there were devout, devout Jews from every nation living in Jerusalem. When they heard the loud noise, everyone came running and they were be bewildered to hear their own languages being spoken by the believers. They were completely amazed. How can this be? They exclaimed. These people are all from Galilee, and yet we hear them speaking in our own native language. Here we are, Parthians, Medes, Elamites, people from Mesopotamia, Judea, Cappadocia, Pontus, the province of Asia, Phrygia, Pamphylia, Egypt, and the areas of Libya around Cyrene, visitors from Rome, both Jews and converts to Judaism, Cretans and Arabs. And we all hear these people speaking in our own languages about the wonderful things that God has done. They stood there amazed and perplexed what can this mean they asked each other but others in the crowd ridiculed them saying they are just drunk that's all then peter stepped forward with 11 other apostles and shouted to the crowd listen carefully all of you fellow jews and residents of jerusalem make no mistake about this these people are not drunk as some of you are assuming it's only nine o'clock in the morning. It's much too early for that. 
No, what you see was predicted long ago by the prophet Joel. In the last days, God says, I will pour out my spirit upon all people. Your sons and daughters will prophesy. Your young men will see visions and your old men will dream dreams. In those days, I will pour out my spirit, even on my servants, men and women alike, and they will prophesy. And I will cause wonders in the heavens above and signs on the earth below, blood and fire and clouds of smoke. The sun will become dark and the moon will turn blood red before the great and glorious day of the Lord arrives. But everyone who calls on the name of the Lord will be saved. This is the word of the Lord. gospel reading this morning comes from the gospel according to John with words of Jesus from chapter 15 and 16. Chapter 15 verse 26, but I will send you the advocate, the truth, the spirit of truth. He will come to you from the father and will testify all about me and you must also testify about me because you have been with me from the beginning of my ministry. And from chapter 16, beginning at the fourth verse. Yes, I'm telling you these things now, so that when they happen, you will remember my warning. I did not tell you earlier, because I was going to be with you for a while longer. But now I am going away to the one who sent me, and not one of you is asking where I am going. Instead, you grieve because of what I've told you. But in fact, it is best for you that I go away, because if I don't, the advocate won't come. If I do go away, then I will send him to you, and when he comes, he will convict the world of its sin and of God's righteousness and of the coming judgment. The world's sin is that it refuses to believe in me. Righteousness is available, available because I go to the Father and you will see me no more. Judgment will come because the ruler of this world has already been judged. There is so much more I want to tell you, but you can't bear it now. When the spirit of truth comes, he will guide you into all truth. He will not speak on his own, but will tell you what he has heard. He will tell you about the future. He will bring me glory by telling you whatever he receives from me. All that belongs to the Father is mine. That's why I said, the Spirit will tell you whatever he receives from me. This is the Gospel of our Lord. Praise be to you, O Christ. Thanks, Michael, and I, and I love the way he was demonstrating exactly what happens to us as the word is read to us, as he breathed on the, uh, on, on the Bible, um, while well, he was trying to separate the pages, but that, that's, I was thinking that's exactly what God is doing. As the word is read, God is breathing on you, uh, breathing life. We're going to say the Nicene Creed. I believe in one God, the Father Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, and of all things visible and invisible. And in one Lord Jesus Christ, the only begotten Son of God, begotten of his Father before all worlds, God of God, light of light, very God of very God, begotten, not made, being of one substance with the Father, by whom all things were made, who for us and for our salvation came down from heaven, and was incarnate by the Holy Spirit of the Virgin Mary, and was made man, and was crucified also for us under Pontius Pilate. He suffered and was buried, and on the third day he rose again according to the scriptures, and ascended into heaven, and sits at the right hand of the Father. 
He will come again with glory to judge the living and the dead, whose kingdom will have no end. And I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Lord and giver of life, who proceeds from the Father and the Son, who together with the Father and the Son is worshipped and glorified, who has spoken through the prophets. I believe in one holy Christian and apostolic church. I acknowledge one baptism for the forgiveness of sins and I look for the resurrection of the dead and the life of the world to come. Amen. You may be seated as we sing our next hymn, Blessed Assurance. grace to you and peace from God our Father and our Lord Jesus Christ. Amen. I want to talk to you this morning about the the first reading that Michael read, The Valley of Dry Bones, uh, that uh, really interesting story uh, from Ezekiel. Let's pray. Heavenly Father, we thank you that you sent your Holy Spirit. Lord, send us your Holy Spirit this morning and breathe into our dry bones that we may live not just live as the world lives, but live as you want us to live, live real life. In Jesus' name, amen. Fascinating story. Fascinating story, this one, if you think about it. What what was going on there? We, We have this story from Ezekiel where he... He saw a valley of dry bones scattered about. It's, it's quite specific, uh, the way it describes it, the story is described. This valley of dry bones. And, um, and even commentators uh, can't make up their minds whether it was a real thing or a vision. You know, whether, whether it actually happened in, the, in real life or whether Ezekiel was having a vision. I mean, each one is real, and each one is worth, you know, that's for the purpose. But, um, you know, the purpose of this, of Ezekiel, uh, God's command to Ezekiel is not that he gets a fresh lot of people um, all nice and neatly manufactured by this miraculous means. That's not the point. The point is that he's got to speak God's word. He's got to prophesy. But we have this uh, this fascinating vision where where God says to Ezekiel, 
Son of man, can these bones live? What's Ezekiel's response to that? Sounds like a bit of a cop-out, doesn't it? Oh Lord, you alone know. Lord, you alone know. Sounds like a bit of a cop-out, you know. Oh, I don't know. He, but Ezekiel wasn't saying, I don't know. He wasn't saying that. What he's saying was, what I know about the world and the way it functions is not important right now. What's important, Lord, is what you know. What I know about the situation, nobody's interested in. Lord, I want to know what you know. That's the attitude to which we need to come to every life situation. As life says to you, as the world says to you, or as God says to you, what do you know about this situation? Your best response is, what I know about the situation is not, imp not as important as what you know, O oh Lord. I'm interested in what you know, Lord. That's the approach that we need to have. You know, we're worried about so many things these days. We, we look about and, and the... Um, uh, you know, we look about at the Lutheran Church. Well, we look at any church, really. Any, any mainstream church today is saying, can these bones live? That's, that's what the church is saying about itself. Can these bones live? We've got to stop focusing on what we know about the situation and start focusing on what God knows about the situation. And we've got to start taking our own abilities out of, the, out of the equation and saying, well, what can God do in this situation? It's perfectly relevant because that's exactly what God tells Ezekiel this vision is all about. He says to him, now I need my glasses. Son of man, these bones are the whole house of Israel. They say our bones are dried up and our hope is gone. We are cut off. Isn't that what the church is saying about itself? Therefore prophesy and say to them, this is what the sovereign Lord says. Oh, my people, I'm going to open your graves and bring you up out of them. I'll bring you back. That's, um, we need to just pause here for a moment and focus on that word prophesy. Um, that's a, a misunderstood word these days. We often think of the word prophecy as in like saying what the weather's going to be like. Right, you know. Um, in three days' time, this will happen. Like reading the tea leaves or something, you know. Um, we often think of prophecy being like that. Yes, in the future, this will happen. Um, like some kind of foreknowledge. That's not what biblical prophecy is. It has nothing to do with it. The fact that something is spoken and then later on something happens has nothing to do with knowing the future. It's about making the future. It's entirely different. It's about speaking into something. See, what God said to Ezekiel was not... Um, Something's going to happen, so prophesy about this. You know, get in first and say to these things. No, what's happening is God is saying, speak to these bones that they may come together, right? Speak it into action. And when Ezekiel speaks, God tells him, Ezekiel speaks, and the bones come together. And then they all stand up. God says, right, now, Ezekiel... Prophesy to the wind, prophesy to the breath, and make it come into them. It's like Ikea people, you know, with the instructions. And God is reading the instructions to Ezekiel, and Ezekiel is listening to the instructions, and okay, this is the next part of putting these people together. It's a, it's a very important thing that you need to understand about Christian prophecy. It's got nothing to do with foretelling. 
It's about speaking God's word into a situation to bring about a change. That's the definition of Christian prophecy. Now, as an example, like this is what God's word is. God's word is living and active, sharper than a two-edged sword. We know that, don't we? God's word lives. God's word has power. So much so that right from the beginning, first chapter of the Bible, God said, let there be you know, light or fish or little gremlins on the ground or whatever, lizards. God said, let there be. And there was. It's the definition of God's word in the Bible. In Isaiah, Isaiah 55, 11 says, my word which goes forth from my mouth will not, to re- not return to me empty without producing that for which it was sent. Yeah, uh, verse 10, it says, you know, just like the snow and rain that falls from the air and produce, you know, brings forth life from the, the ground, so my word that goes forth from my mouth will not return to me empty. So God's word comes out of his mouth. Nothing's happening down there yet. God's word goes out. Let there be, it goes out and it impacts what it's spoken to and bang, something happens and it returns to him like it, it uh, comes back to him as like an echo and the echo is the life or the action or the light which he spoke. So God speaks stuff into being. He spoke you into being. He called you forth from the earth just as Jesus called Lazarus forth from the grave. That word does something. A fascinating thing about all of this is that God is teaching Ezekiel to do his thing, to do God's own thing. What, what other God, what other religion is like ours, where God teaches us to do God's things? All the other religions are live right. These are the rules. You, down here, little gremlin, follow the rules. That's what religion is. Christianity is completely different. God says, I have this power, I'm going to give it to you. I have creative power, I'm going to teach you how to do it. I think that's amazing. I'm going to teach you life, I'm going to teach you healing, I'm going to teach you how to bring hope into a situation. I'm going to teach you how to bring life to dry bones. So he teaches Ezekiel, prophesy Ezekiel, prophesy to these dead bones, these dry bones. Now, so you get the idea of what prophecy is. You get the idea of of what the word of God is. It speaks into terrible situations. God word, God's word speaks and brings forth that for which it was sent. That's why we are called to forgive because that's a life-giving power. And when we forgive, we destroy sin in someone and we destroy the impacts of sin and we bring forth life when you forgive. You, you destroy the killing power of sin and you bring people to life. And you bring yourself to life. Um, when we're called to love with God's love, it brings that creative power which brings life and joy into people's life and into your own life as you use it. See, God doesn't just stand there and tell you to obey the rules and then you have to obey the rules and wonder for the rest of your life 
whether you're doing the right thing. No. He says, you are mine. You are my child. You are my beloved uh, child, just like Jesus. And, and I've rescued you from sin. I've rescued you from death. And now I'm going to teach you how to do my things. My creative word. And then he sends us out to do those things. He says, prophesy. Prophesy. That's what Paul says about the gifts of the Spirit, doesn't he? He says, I wish you could all speak in tongues, but I'd rather that you prophesy. I'm going to prophesy to you this morning because that's what I'm supposed to do. I'm going to prophesy, I'm going to speak God's word into this, into this church, into, this, into the life of this community. I'm going to speak God's word, I'm going to prophesy into your life. Until my last breath, I hope to keep doing it. But I want to prophesy into your life this morning. Not just tell you something nice or inform you about something good. I mean, that's, that's all part of it. It's... It's good information to know that God loves you, that he forgives all your sin and it destroys the works of the devil in you. That's good information. But I want to go further than that because God calls me further than that. God commands me further than that and God empowers me further than that. He says, Pastor Rob, prophesy to your people. Prophesy to the dead parts and bring them to life. Prophesy to the dry parts and breathe life into them. Prophesy to a dying church and bring it to life that it may live because the community needs it. And so I say to you this morning, dry bones live. Fearful hearts be courageous. hopeless situations have hope suffering illness those of you suffering illness be healed here this morning those of you who are worried about your children their, their faith life or their direction take faith Go with open hearts. Open your voices. Open your hearts to people and call them home with the power of Christ. Feeble hearts, fearful hearts, be bold in Christ because he is in you. Those of you who have been broken through life circumstances and you don't know where your life is going and whether you can even face another day. Be raised up with new life. I breathe on you the breath of life which is from Christ himself and in that life May you live again and be brave, be healed, be restored, be refreshed, be rehoped, if that's a word. These are not my words. Every one of them is given by God. Every one of them is from Scripture. Every one of them is, uh, is just rephrasing the purpose of the crucifixion and resurrection of Christ and its purpose and so I prophesy to you church that your dry bones may live and in doing so bring this community to life and the peace of God which passes all understanding keep your hearts in, in Christ Jesus now and always Amen
We're going to sing our next song now, Revive Thy Work, O Lord. And may this be a prayer. As, as we give our offerings, may we give our hearts to, to, to God's purpose in us, to revive us and bring us to life. Let us pray that God would pour out the Holy Spirit on the church and on all people. Thank you, Holy Father, for giving the Holy Spirit to your people at Pentecost as you had promised. Pour out your life-giving Spirit on your church throughout the world and fill its members with, your, with the gifts of your Spirit. Especially equip all pastors with the truth of your word and the gospel of peace and the love of Christ. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. You sent out your spirit on the disciples like the rush of a mighty wind and distributed tongues of fire on their heads. Take away, take away and burn out all that is evil in us. Consecrate all your people for holy service and empower us to work with you in sharing your saving good news with the world. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Through your Holy Spirit, you inspired the disciples to praise your marvellous deeds in many different languages. Give us mouths that speak your praise. May joyfully confess you as our Lord and boldly proclaim our common faith to the world. May all the churches in this area witness to Christ and give all Christians the unity that is only possible through the Holy Spirit and your word of truth. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Your spirit touched the hearts of those who heard the gospel from Peter. Speak to the consciences of those who hear your word and convince them of its truth so that they may turn from their sins and receive the gift of forgiveness. Open the minds and hearts of those in our homes, in our neighbourhoods and in our workplaces to hear and believe. Lord, in your mercy, 
Hear our prayer. You gave the Holy Spirit to all those who were baptised on the day of Pentecost. Let your Spirit renew the faith of all those who have been baptised so that they may devote themselves in public worship to the teaching of the apostles, the giving of gifts to you and the breaking of bread and the Lord's Supper and the prayer of the church for the world. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. You brought light out of darkness and order out of chaos by your Spirit in the creation of the world. Let your Spirit move over our unruly world and heal its broken people. Bring peace to places where there is trouble and unrest. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Your Spirit brought healing and hope through the good news of Jesus' resurrection. Give this same healing and hope to all who are sick or distressed today, including those known to us personally to be in need and whom we now name in our hearts. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. You united people from many different nations and cultures by your Holy Spirit. Bring together those who have been divided by misunderstanding, hatred and mistrust. And join us with them and all the angels as we adore you forever. Through Jesus Christ our Lord, who lives and reigns with you and the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. Um, yes, we start here. The Lord be with you. <clears throat> Lift up your hearts. Let us give thanks to the Lord. <clears throat> it is truly fitting and right and for our lasting good that we should at all times and in all places Give thanks to you, O Lord, Holy Father, almighty and eternal God, through Jesus Christ our Lord. Therefore, with angels and archangels and with all the company of heaven, we adore and magnify your glorious name, evermore praising you and saying, Father in heaven, hallowed be your name. Your kingdom come, your will be done on earth as in heaven. Give us today our daily bread. Forgive us our sins as we forgive those who sin against us. Lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For the kingdom, the power and the glory are yours, now and forever. Amen. You may be seated as we sing our hymn in preparation for the Lord's Supper, Thee Will I Love.
our Lord Jesus Christ on the night when he was betrayed took bread and when he had given thanks he broke it and gave it to his disciples and said take and eat this is my body which is given for you do this in remembrance of me in the same way he took the cup after the supper and when he'd given thanks he gave it to them and said drink of it all of you this is my body my blood which is shed for you for the forgiveness of sins do this as often as you drink it in remembrance of me the peace of the Lord be with you always. Amen. Come and receive from the Lord. As you come and receive, know that you're receiving life, healing and salvation in this wonderful meal. Come for all things are now ready.
things right. The body of our Lord and Saviour, Jesus Christ, and his most precious blood, strengthen and preserve you in body and in soul to life everlasting. Go in peace. Amen. Lord be with you. I give thanks to the Lord for he is good. Hallelujah. Let us pray. We give you thanks, almighty God, that you have refreshed us through this healing gift. And we pray that through it you would graciously strengthen us in faith toward you and in love toward one another through your Son, Jesus Christ, our Lord, who lives and reigns with you and the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. Let us bless the Lord. The Lord bless you and keep you. The Lord make his face shine upon you and be gracious to you. The Lord look upon you with favour and give you peace. You may be seated as we sing our final hymn. Uh, this may be known by some of you. Count your many blessings.
Now, as far as announcements go, Michael, you've got something to say. Good morning, everyone. Yes, I do have something genuine to say, but before I say that, last year I gave in to reality and realised that I could no longer read the type in the Bible because you all got a Bible at home and if you go back and have a look at it, it's about font size five or six. And even with my glasses on, that was nearly impossible for me to read comfortably. So, decision time. Buy a Bible with large print in it. So, off I go to Kuyong. And this is an interesting exercise. If you're going to go and buy a new Bible, people, this is an interesting exercise. Yeah, you go to Kuyong and they're all there. They still have the King James Version on the shelf all the way through to I don't know what. So I spoke to a Lutheran pastor that I know and he said, oh, I just bought a new Bible and I bought this one. He said, you should have a look at it. So I did. And it's available in large print. But even so, what they've done, large print for Bibles is still only about print size 10, about twice the size of all our old Bibles. And I need about... 14, 16 or even 18 on a bad day and uh, the other thing they did to keep the size down is the paper is really, really thin. It's like tissue paper and with my clumsy fingers I have trouble turning the pages over. So that's why I was blowing on the Bible this morning. It was also a great prophetic uh, action for us. <laughs> coincidence. Right, the real reason for standing up here was on Thursday the ladies had a stall down the street again. Some of you will remember that Thursday was a cold, wet, miserable, and I nearly said something else, day. Uh, not very pleasant at all, was it, Barbara? No. But they were there in all their glory, and uh, I, on behalf of the congregation, thank those six or eight ladies who turn up for street stalls and organise them and stand there and, uh, in the cold and the wet and, and sell whatever there is to sell. I'd also like to thank all those ladies who bake goods. There was a big supply of baked goods there on Thursday, and it sold readily and quickly and uh, was in demand. Uh, in fact, I was talking to a forklift driver out at Nolan's and he said, oh, is the Lutheran stall on today? This was at 7 o'clock in the morning. And I said, yeah. He said, uh, he said, oh, I should go and buy some cakes and biscuits. I said, you should, but I don't think he did. <laughs> um, so thank you to the ladies who bake. Wait your turn, Mrs Clyden. <laughs> Thank you to those farmers again who give so generously and so willing and with a smile on their face the fresh vegetables that uh, the ladies sell and make some money out of. As I've said to you before, some of them are not Lutherans, but they still give. Some of them are Lutherans that belong to other congregations and they give also. Um, and I really uh, want to acknowledge their generosity of spirit, their willingness of heart and the smile on their face and thank them on your behalf for, for what they do for this congregation. Thank you very much. Malcolm. It was $1,000 then. Um, I've been away working in South Australia for the last three months and uh, on behalf of the Barry Barmer Lutheran Church, the Zion Lutheran, they send greetings back up here to us and uh, while I was down there I visited Shirley Liebelt and she sends greetings back to you up here too, so there you go. Thanks, Mary. Okay, uh, remember if you're concerned about the LLL and what's going on there and you need to know, then there'll be a, a meeting at, um, on the 23rd of May at 7pm uh, at Ipswich. Um, and I'm sure you could, you know, get a carload or something like that. Um, 
as far as uh, uh, CRI, Christian uh, Religious Instruction, there's going to be a training and info day here at Peace on Saturday, May the 18th, 9am to 3pm. Um, so, what have I done there? That looks a bit sus, doesn't it? Yeah, that's, uh, that's not even prophetic, is it? Well, I, I thought I copied it straight out of an email. I'm going to have to straighten that up, aren't I? Where, where is it? Um, okay, Susie, what do you say? Um... Now it'll be Peace Lutheran Church, Module 1 and 2, Peace Lutheran Church on Tuesday the 2nd of July. That's nothing, that's nowhere near. Next module 1. Oh, okay, all right. Um, anyway, there'll be something happening here sometime to do with all right watch that space uh coming up next week this i know to be true next sunday evening remember there's no 10 a.m service so there's only the 8 a.m and then if you miss that one you know wait all the way until 6 p.m 5 p.m if you want a sausage and um and then 6 p.m for worship it's going to be great because we'll have uh, representatives from all of the Lockyer Valley churches and uh, we'll see how many we can get here. We had eight different churches last time. Uh, let's see, see how many we can get here next time, uh, this time. And um, it'll be good. We have a, a guest speaker from Rockhampton, uh, John Alley, um, whom I've had a lot to do with and uh, a great friend um, and marvellous speaker, just has a, a wonderful way of putting things really encouraging. Uh, so come along and mingle with lots of other Christians from other denominations. Uh, you know, declare our... We want to make a, a big enough noise that the community takes notice. You know, see, we are all friends. Um, okay. And um, Pastor Rob, the, the reason there is no 10 a.m. service is that our AGM is next Sunday, immediately following the 8 a.m. service. Right. And there are book, copies of the books of, of reports currently sitting in the foyer and I'll get some more straight off the photocopier once the service is finished so people should make sure they grab a copy and come along prepared at the AGM next Sunday. That's, um, that's the rest of the story. Right, and is that all our announcements? Yep, that's it. Uh, only one thing remains and that is to um, count our blessings of coffee and little snacks at the back have a mingle enjoy uh, may you enjoy your week and, and may God speak into your life and bring life to uh, to your situations God bless <laughs>